our first anniversary last Sunday. We're one year old church. Amen. And we know that we're going forward from two, three, four, and going forward until the day of the return of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So let me greet some of our friends, especially from Japan. Sister Mai, good afternoon. God is so good. Amen. Just keep on trusting the Lord because God has a wonderful plan for your lives. And actually, that's for all of us. Amen. So greetings from the Philippines. Amen. Praise the Lord. A blessed Sunday to each one of us. Welcome to our church online worship. Amen. So we have 17 uh, that's watching right now. I want everyone to share this broadcast. Amen. Can we do that? Share this broadcast at the count of three, two, one. Push that share button. Amen and amen. Yes, and let's keep on pushing the heart button also while remembering, while singing that song, I love the family of God. And let's keep on tagging our loved ones, our friends, because who knows? This could be the time for them to come to the Lord and surrender their life unto the Lord. Or the word of God that is about to to speak to us. This could be the word that they are waiting. They may have problems. They may have trials. So just keep on sharing. Just keep on tagging. Amen. Today is the fifth month of lockdown. It seems like March 12 was just yesterday. Now it's already August 16. Amen. But we know that God is in control. Say it. God is in? God is in control. Amen. God is in control over our lives. And God did not forsake us even for a second. Amen. God made our five months of crisis very fruitful. Amen. What were the good things that God did to us as a church, as an individual? Our online worship better and better. We started our daily online devotional and prayer. We started it last March, last week of March. Like we have 40 to 50 praying every day. Amen. God is so good. We also started our kids' church online last April. And also last April, we also held our online camp teaching on the blood of Jesus. Also, many graduated our life class online and our online encounter. And this week, we completed our online destiny modules from 1 to 6. Amen. That's the 10 week, 10 weeks lesson. We have also several meaningful youth and advanced network online activities. We have most of our cell groups transitioned to online meetings and we open new cell groups online. We have also the weekly network mentoring every Saturday, 4 to 5.30 in the afternoon. And at this very moment, we are on the third week of running the first PX3 pandemic version. And my dear brothers and sisters, in all these things, we can say to God be the glory. Come on, shout it out. Give all the glory to the Lord. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, our last series was on it is on the message of the roof as our, our top covering. And top covering is protection for the flaming arrows of the enemy. For the storms that may come our way. And all the persistent attacks of the enemy in our lives. But we praise the Lord because God himself is our covering in 
Psalms chapter 91, the whole chapter of it. God is our refuge. God is our fortress. Amen. And God gave us His armor. God's armor is our covering. God has given us also His armor. And God wants us to put on the whole armor of God. Not any man's armor, but His armor. Not the Romans' armor. So Roman soldiers, but His armor. Amen. And last Sunday, God gave us the message about the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of man. Jesus is the Lamb of God. And Jesus is not the Lamb of man. In the Passover, they are the one who choose, who pick their Lamb. But the ultimate sacrifice was the Lamb of God, not the Lamb of man. So God's Lamb, Jesus shed His blood as a covering and also to cleanse us, to cleanse us for all our sins. Amen? Hallelujah. So we have the blood of Jesus as our covering against the works and schemes and accusation of the devil. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, in our last topic for the series, I want you to open your Bible with me in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, 11 to 16. And this is about God's gift to the church. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. And He gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to mature to manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into Him who is the head into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped when its part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. I want to read also another passage in the Bible in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17. And I want to read to you in the Amplified Version. Obey your spiritual leaders and submit to them continually recognizing their authority over you for they are constantly keeping watch over your souls in guarding your spiritual welfare as men who will have to render an account of their trust do your part to let them do this with gladness and with and not with sighing and groaning for that would not be profitable to you either so my dear brothers and sisters we will take up one by one the following and that is obedience submission in the passage in hebrews to watch over our souls guard your spiritual welfare render an account do this with gladness the work of god is to place us under cover under the covering by the Lord Himself, by God Himself, by God's armor, by God's lamp with the blood, and by God's gift, His leaders. In our passage today, He said, Submit, obey to your spiritual leaders, recognize their authority. So we should obey godly leaders because they keep watch over our souls as those who are accountable to God. They are the one entrusted by the Lord to equip the church. They are the one given by Jesus Himself to equip us. And God established authorities for our covering. 
God has constituted various levels of authority under His ultimate authority. God is the ultimate authority. God has constituted these uh, different authorities and for the purpose of protecting and blessing those under that authority. Number one, God established government to protect its people. God established the authority of the civil government to protect and bless law-abiding citizens from those that would harm or take advantage of them. We can read that in Romans chapter uh, 13. Romans chapter 13. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. So God instituted, God established government for the protection of people and to bless the people under that government. But we know what sometimes, and this hap it is happening, that sometimes government uh, leaders, they became, uh, because of the sinful nature, corrupt. They do evil things. But when they're doing their job, criminals are punished. Foreign invaders are kept away. And the people can dwell in peace. But if government leaders are corrupt or negligent, citizens suffer. But we need to obey, still obey the government. Amen? But in the Bible, there are instances that this obedience to authorities were challenged. In Acts chapter 5, verse 29, when the apostles, Peter, uh, James, and the other apostles, they were forbidden not to preach Christ anymore. They were called by the government, the supreme leader, the high priest, and they told them, did we not told you before not to teach, not to preach anymore about this Jesus? But now you are flooding Jerusalem with his names. And you are implicating us that we are responsible for, their, for his death. So stop preaching. Stop teaching. In Acts chapter 5 verse 29, Peter said, we will rather obey God than men. It happened also in the Old Testament when Daniel was forbidden. Actually, not just Daniel. It was for all the people because there was a setup for Daniel. They were forbidden not to pray. There was a king decree. But Daniel still prayed. So he was arrested. And he just came with the arresting officer and accepted the punishment. Right? For Daniel, he will still pray. Amen? He will still pray. And just like to his three friends, they still followed the Lord. Amen? Amen? So may their brothers and sisters, yes, there are authorities. But God's law is higher than man's law. Amen? God's law is higher than any government's law. So we will follow God's law rather than man's law. If the Christians, we as Christians, were forbidden not to fulfill our duties as a Christian. Or our faith, they will, they will ask us to stop worshiping the Lord. Or they will ask us to curse Jesus. They will ask us 
to turn back from our faith. That's the only time Christian disobey. It's when the authorities go against God's law, against God's word. Amen. Number two, God established parents to protect their children in the family. God appoints parents to have authority under Christ in order to protect and bless their family. The husband must provide for his family to protect his family from physical and spiritual danger, danger and to bless his family by leading them in the ways of God. But sometimes ungodly husband who uses ungodly husband who uses authority for his own selfish ends abusing the authority that God has entrusted him and we know we all we will answer to God in the judgment seat by Christ number 3 that i want to share to you about authorities are the established authority in the church. God established leaders to protect the church from the enemies. In the church, God has appointed overseer for the flock of Jesus. And they are not to lord over the church, but rather to be an example to the flock. On every level, those in authority are never in absolute authority. Amen? Every leader, every authority will give an account to the Lord. Can you say amen? Amen and amen. So let's take a look for the works of our leaders. What are the work of our leaders? In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 to 16, the work of our leaders is to equip the church. Amen? They are equipping the church. They are entrusted by the Lord to build up the church so that the church can work for the ministry. For the building up of the body of Christ. Leaders in the church, they are there to equip us so that we can all attain the unity of faith. To attain the full knowledge of the Son of God. For us to attain to mature manhood to the fullness of Christ. So that we may no longer be children Amen? Do you want to stay as children? Or do you want to mature? Do you want your children to stay as children? Or do you want them to grow? Of course, we all want to grow. That's why there are leaders. There are some leaders, my dear brothers and sisters. There are minister leaders. There are pastors, apostles, prophets teachers, evangelists, so that they can equip us to grow, that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves of wrong doctrines, human deception, deceitful schemes of the enemies. Our leaders equip us to grow in every way so that it builds itself up. So that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human deception, or by craftiness in deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow in every way into Him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body joined together and held by every joint with which it is equipped when its part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. 
So our leaders, they are equippers. And they equip us so that we grow in our Christian life. Another one, they are keeping watch over our souls. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 5. You know, uh, keeping watch literally means to abstain completely from sleep. That's in the Bible. Keep watch is to abstain from sleep or pass sleepless nights. Keep watch is to be sleepless, to lie awake and think about to stay alert. That's keep watch, the watchman in the Bible. Figuratively, to stay alert, to remain vigilant for any attack of the enemy. To be fully aware of threatening peril. To be alert. So that's the watchman. Have you asked your leader? Anong oras po kayo natutulog? What time you go to sleep? Did you ask your leader about that kind of question? Or what time you wake up in the morning? So why is it needful to continually keep watch over our souls? Because we as Christians, we have enemies. The world, the flesh, and the devil, Satan himself. And these three, each one of them, irrevocably, Determined to bring harm to our soul. They want to push, out, push us down. They cannot keep a believer out of heaven. But they can impede the progress of a Christian. They can stop us from serving the Lord. They can discourage us. They can drift us away from the calling of the Lord. So that's why we have leaders and they keep watch over our soul. And we as, a, as an overseer, a description of an overseer, the overseer must carry on his work in the view of the judgment seat of Christ. That must be our basis where we will give account to our service, our motives, and our methods because there will be a judgment set of Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. Number three, they are not, they are not just equippers or watching over our souls. Our leaders, they are guarding our spiritual welfare. They are watching our spiritual life. They are looking after our faith. They are there guiding us. Their task requires discernment to know where people, we as members of the body of Christ, are we still safe or we are heading toward spiritual dangers. Leaders must love God and love people enough to have courage to confront those who are drifting to be able to bring them back to the Lord. Leaders can only guide those who are willing. We cannot guide those who don't want our administration. We cannot guide those who refuse us. We cannot guide those who reject us. Right? We can only lead those who are willing to be led. 
Godly leaders must always make the effort. This task is difficult in our days because there's a lot of churches in our place, in our cities, in NCR. Because if people get upset at one church, or if the leaders there try to confront some sin in their lives, they just move down to another church that welcomes them. Sadly, they usually carry their problems with them. And this happens every now and then. Number four, their leader, our leaders, they are rendering account to the Lord. Leaders will give account before the Lord. How they serve God. How did they took care of their people and watch over their disciples. How they equipped their disciples. How they protected the spiritual lives of God's children. You know, the role of leaders is very important. And it's not easy. At times, it's tiring. Sometimes leader, leaders, there are depression. Sometimes it is a thankless job. People they serve sometimes forget to be grateful. Sometimes people they serve forget to be mindful of them. You know what? When the members got sick, the leaders prayed. But how about if the leaders got sick? Do you pray for them? We must. That's why Paul said, pray also for me. Right? So leaders, they go on visitation. How about visiting your leader? Amen? So let's move forward. So to render an account with grief because of the lack of obedience to their members, sometimes this happens. So that is the meaning of unprofitable for you. When there is disobedience, leaders grieve. They are sad when they are sad when the people in their fold was in the middle of a mess because of disobedience. There is grief in the leader's heart. But leaders must serve God with joy. Amen. We must do it, leaders. We must do it with joy. All leaders were filled with joy when God called them in the ministry. All are excited to serve God. All are excited to serve the family of God. That is why the Word of God has a lot of admonition concerning submission to leaders. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 12, let's read that verse. But we request, but we request of you, brethren, that you appreciate those who diligently labor among you and have charged over you in the Lord and give you instruction. Paul said, appreciate your leader. Appreciate those who labor among you. Appreciate those who are charged over you in the Lord. Appreciate your sea leaders who give you instruction. Can you say amen? Can we do it? Can you shout it out? As a word of an appreciation to our leaders, appreciate your leaders. Also in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, the elders who rule well are to be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who work hard at preaching and teaching. This is Paul admonishing the Thessalonian believers. He told them, he told them, give them double 
honor. Honor them. Not just honor one, but two honors. Double honor. Those leaders, elders who rule well. Give them double honors. Those who leaders who work hard in preaching. Who work hard in teaching. Give them double honor. Inform them that you were blessed by their life. Inform them that you were blessed by their teaching. Amen? Send them flowers. Send them food, clothes, or things in messenger. Amen? In messenger, send those things. They will smile. Amen? Because you appreciate them even in just messenger message. You may also give them honorarium in messenger. Or if you really want it, do it GCAS. Amen. Because leaders must serve with joy, not with grief. Let's move. Whether you know what, whether there are appreciation or whether or not there are appreciation or whether or not there is an honor, honorarium, leaders will keep serving the Lord with joy and gladness. Amen? Because that's not the motivation of leaders. The motivation of leaders to serve God because they love the Lord. So let's let them do their job with joy. Lead with joy. And leaders, I want to encourage you, do not serve the Lord and the people of the Lord with your own strength. You cannot do it naturally. You can only do this supernaturally. Joy is, the integ is an integral component of the fruit of the Holy Spirit in the leader's life. Leaders, let's allow the Holy Spirit to take full control of our lives. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. And the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control. All leaders must have a continual dependence on the gift, on the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen and amen. Let's move forward, my dear brothers and sisters. I want to go to the point number three. The work of every Christian because we have leaders and they have work. So what will be our response? The work of every Christian, as stated in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17, that is to obey. Obey your leaders. Why do we need to obey our leaders? You know what? Because in the past, there were a lot of disobedience. And Adam himself disobeyed God, Cain disobeyed his parents. There were a lot of disobedience in times of Samuel. In Samuel chapter 8 verse 19, they did not listen to their leader, Samuel. They wanted a king. Samuel, Samuel would want your proposal. We want a physical king. Because Samuel told them, no, you don't need a king because your king is God but the people cried out shouted no we want a physical king and God gave them what they were asking God gave King Saul and we know what happened my dear brothers and sisters in Proverbs Solomon said the students did not want to listen to the teacher the student didn't want to listen to the instructor. So there are examples of disobedience. 
but we must obey. Like the example of the centurion. Centurion is a Roman military captain. But at that passage, my dear brothers and sisters, he trusted Jesus. That's why he approached Jesus for the healing of his slave girl. But he said, the centurion said, Lord, please, don't come to our house. Just say a word. And my servant girl will be healed. And that's why Jesus said, for all these people, this man's faith is very rare. Right? So there's obedience to him. Lord, just say a word and my servant girl will be healed. We need to obey God. And we need to obey the leaders entrusted by God for us. We need to submit to them. Recognize their authority. Amen? To submit my dear brothers and sisters is to continually yield to the authority. To yield to the admonition of our leaders. To submit means to resist. To means not to resist no longer. To stop resisting. But to give up or yield to this authority. Amen? To submit means to yield, to surrender to authority of the, uh, of the leader and to any admonition they might give to us. I know all of us, one time in our life, we resisted leaders. We refuse the leader's advice. You know what? Effective leadership requires effective following. Leaders will not be effective if there's no effective following. Amen? In time of Jesus, there were thousands and thousands following him. But there will come a time crisis came. Only 120 followed him. Out of the 5,000, out of the many, many people following him. So my dear brothers and sisters, as I close the word of God in Hebrews 13 verse 17, he asked us, Obey your leaders. Submit to them, for they are your covering. They're equipping you, watching over your souls, guarding your spiritual welfare. They'll give an account. So let them do their ministry with joy, not with grief. Not with sighing. Amen? God designed authority to protect and bless us. If you disobey godly church leaders who proclaim God's word to you in Galatians 6, 7 to 8, you are really disobeying God which always has a serious consequence. Amen? Again, it is implicit that these leaders are conscientious men who are walking with God. Spiritual children, like our natural children, can be a source of immense joy or immense grief which literally groaning. Every pastor has had a frequent occasion of both joy and and for groaning over people in the flock. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Stand up, please.
Thank you, God. Bow your head, close your eyes. We have everything we need in life to be mature, strong, victorious, fruitful, and be there at the return of Jesus. Now we just need to put everything into practice. Always remember what we have learned in the series of building our life. Jesus is our foundation and obeying His Word. Our pillars are our devotional life. Strengthen it. Our church attendance weekly. Sunday, Wednesday. Our weekly cell group meeting. In our training so that we can be equipped in everything. We need not forget the walls of life. These walls will always protect us from the attacks of the enemy. The wall of love, the wall of obedience, the wall of faithfulness, and the wall of righteousness. In our roof, as our top covering, God Himself is our covering. God's armor, God's lung, and God's gift to equip the church and they are our leaders Lord we thank you for today and this afternoon we honor you today Lord God because we receive a lot from you we receive your word Lord God and you keep on strengthening our life and we are sure of this O Lord God that there's no storm no calamities Lord God in the future that can knock us down. Lord God, there is no schemes of the devil that can topple us. There is no plan of the devil that can put us down, Lord God. Because we are sure of this, that Jesus is our foundation and our life is built on Him and Him alone. Thank you, Lord God, for today. Thank you, Lord God, for everything. Thank you, Lord God, for your word. Thank you, Lord God, for your power. Thank you, Lord God, for everything in our life. Lord God, we honor you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Thank you, Lord God. You may take your seat. And of course, my dear brothers and sisters, we want to honor the Lord with every blessings that we receive. We know that everything comes from the Lord, including our job, including our businesses, including everything that we have in life. And we want to honor the Lord for it. Amen? So, it will be flash in the screen, our bank's details, in our GCAS, and if you need some questions, you just ask your leader or your pastor or anyone on how you can send your giving for the church. Amen and amen. Let's just honor the Lord with everything in our life. I just want, before I end, I just want to, to remind you of our uh, uh, PX3 pandemic version we are now on the third week of praying. Amen. And on August 30, it will be our grand celebration, grand harvest. So for this week, I want you to pray hard with your group, rebuking the strongholds in their life. Because, you know, the enemy what doesn't want them to come to know the Lord. Amen? So pray hard with your group of re rebuking you know, this is strongholds in their life. So let's get to know these people in our list and pray with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Pray with the power of the Holy Spirit. When we pray with the power of the Holy Spirit, we will receive enough strength 
enough passion, enough power, and the Holy Spirit will give us wisdom, the Holy Spirit will give us discernment and knowledge to address our limitation. And for this third week, before we have one meal fasting, but right now, for this third week, we will do two meal, two meals of fasting. It's up to you if you want to split it like Monday lunch and then Wednesday dinner. It's up to you uh, what combination you like to do for your fasting. But fast with your group so that you can have a concentration and focus in praying unto the Lord for the VIPs in your list. Amen? And number four, it's time to call your VIPs. Call them. Amen? And share to them John 3.16. Amen? Share to them John 3.16. And believe God that they're gonna receive Jesus in their life. And invite them to attend your cell group or to attend our online worship. Amen? So let's keep on inviting in our CIF Ortiga Center every 3.30 to 5 o'clock in the afternoon at CIF Ortiga Center page. So my dear brothers and sisters, God bless you today. God bless your family. God bless your work. God bless your business. God bless everything that you, your hand touches. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today in Christ International Fellowship or Tiga Center. This is Pastor Gani saying God bless you so much.